Good morning, St. Michael's. Good morning. Welcome to worship. Settle down now. Settle down. Settle down. Find your seats. Hello to everybody in Facebook land. I think we might actually not be glitching this morning, so that's actually a good thing. <laughs> Welcome to worship, everyone. Glad to have you here. Uh, we've had uh, quite an exciting weekend, uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then today. We had about 300 guests. For the, uh, for the Betty and Bo wedding show. And I was really surprised. Um, it was pretty obvious who the minister was. And, uh, <laughs> and um, I handed out a lot of history sheets. I handed out a couple of newsletters. Um, people were very, very interested in the history of our church and, and the building. And, uh, you know, it was, it was wonderful because I, I actually... Before and after the production, I was out in my uh, 1930s worship garb, uh, which was kind of fun because I remember that as a child. Remember the black uh, underneath and the white on top with the little tiny stoles? Um, you know, that, that your dad probably had a few of those. So, um, so anyway, uh, it was wonderful, and we thank everybody who uh, contributed, especially those who helped with the reception on Sunday, uh, Saturday afternoon. Uh, it was a lot of work. A lot of work. I, I, told, I told a few people, I feel like I was at a soccer tournament all weekend and I was the ball. <laughs> <laughs> so let's, uh, let's talk about the future now. A um, couple of things happening this week that we want you to know about and in the weeks ahead. Uh, Tuesday evening. Oh. Absolutely. Thank you, Kate. From the very beginning of this uh, endeavor, we, we have sought to make St. Michael a place that people feel welcome and feel like something is happening and is a public place. And I think you know, that's kind of the spirit in which we have tried to do this. So um, it, it's not for everybody, I know that, but it's, it was really an interesting way to get to know our neighbors and get to know folks. Um, and for people to see a ton of cars in the parking lot as they drive by, <laughs> it's always a good thing. So thank you very much. Uh, Tuesday evening, Beer and Hymns at 5 o'clock at Craft and Draft. If you would like to be a part of that, we'd love to have you. Um, the food there is really good, and uh, the fellowship is outstanding. So uh, 5 to 7 is when we meet there. Bible study, we are continuing with the Passion Narratives, but we've moved now into the Resurrection Appearances from all four gospel witnesses. Uh, so that's been a lot of fun and we've been learning a lot of new things and, and having a lot of great discussion. Friday uh, from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. we have a shred day. Uh, so if you have, uh, I think it's a limit of three boxes. Um, and uh, if you've got stuff to shred, just show up, uh, line up at 11 o'clock and we'll run them through the shredder. And uh, we do this uh, again as a community event for people to know that, uh, that we're here and alive and well. Um, also, because we do a lot of shredding in terms of our old bulletins and that sort of thing because they have personal information in them. And so, you know, kind of that's why, we, uh, why we've made a priority about that shred event. So that's Friday, 10, uh, the 10th of May, 11 to 1. Uh, Fireflies game on May 15th. We are still uh, taking reservations. Talk to Chris in the office. I think there might be one or two spaces uh, left on the bus, uh, which just makes it easier. We meet here at the church, go there, come back, and uh, uh, it just makes uh, life easier for folks in terms of packing and all that sort of thing, or parking and all that sort of thing. Uh, Sunday, May 19th at 5 o'clock, Pastor Elise will be installed as the pastor of St. John in Abington, Virginia, and I'm going to be there. So uh, we will have our worship led by our great uh, Jeff Duggar and Karen, uh, Cantor Karen. So uh, we're going to do songs and stories of the Holy Spirit. So we, you know, we're going to basically celebrate that third great uh, uh, Sunday of the church year, uh, Christmas, Easter, Pentecost. Those are the ones that we try to highlight. Um, so you know, thank you so much for your consideration with that. Today would have been my mother's 95th birthday. 
and so you know, just May fifth is always uh, is always sort of a joy and a, a sorrow for those of us who've lost parents. Um, you know, you want to celebrate their birthday, but you also kind of think, what would she be like at ninety five? I mean, she was a totally terror at seventy. So. <laughs> So I kind of wonder what she might have been like at 95. And some of the 95-year-olds I've met in my life have uh, also made me, uh, made me uh, scared, actually, in some ways. <laughs> Any announcements from the congregation before we begin worship? Yes, ma'am. Oh, that's right. Okay. Wonderful. Yeah, we've got a couple of boxes of things uh, in, the, uh, in the administration building. Wonderful. Anything else? Thank you so much for being here. Let's take a few moments to prepare ourselves for worship. with joy a child of God forgiven loved and free the life of Jesus to recall in love laid down for me in love laid down for me I come with Christians far and near to find them
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the wellspring of grace, our Easter and our joy. Amen. Look, here is water. Here is our water of life. Alleluia. Immersed in the promises of baptism, let us give thanks for what God has done for us. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your voice thundered over the deep, and water became the essence of life. Adam and Eve beheld Eden's verdant rivers. The ark carried your creation through the flood into a new day. Miriam led the dancing as your people passed through the sea into freedom's land. In a desert pool, the Ethiopian official entered your boundless baptismal life. Look, here is water. At the river, your beloved son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you opened the floodgates of your reconciling love, freeing us to live as Easter people. We rejoice with glad hearts, giving all honor and praise to you through the risen Christ, our source of living water, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Look. Here is water. Christ has arisen, alleluia. Rejoice and praise him, alleluia. For our Redeemer burst from the tomb, even from death dispelling its gloom. Let us sing praise to him with endless joy. Death's fearful sting he has come to destroy. Our sin forgiving, alleluia. Jesus is living, alleluia. For three long days the grave did its worst, until its strength by God was dispersed. He who gives life did death undergo, and in its conquest his might did show. Let us sing praise to him with endless joy, death's fearful sting he has come to destroy. Our sin forgiving, alleluia, Jesus is living, alleluia. The angel said to them, do not fear, you look for Jesus who is not here. See for yourselves, the tomb is all bare, only the grave claws are lying there. Let us sing praise to him with endless joy. Death's fearful sting he has come to destroy. Our sin forgiving, alleluia. Jesus is living, alleluia. Let us pray. O oh God, you have prepared for those who love you joys beyond understanding. Pour into our hearts such love for you that loving you above all things, we may obtain your promises, which exceed all we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, our son, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Acts. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles, for they heard them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter said, 
Can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? So he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they invited him to stay for several days. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Sing a new song to the Lord who has done marvelous things, whose right hand and holy arm have won the victory. O oh Lord, you have made known your victory. You have revealed your righteousness in the sight of the nations. You remember your steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Shout with joy to the Lord, all you lands. Lift up your voice, rejoice and sing. Sing to the Lord with the harp with the harp and the voice of song, with trumpets and the sound of the horn, shout with joy before the King, the Lord. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the world and those who dwell therein. Let the rivers clap their hands, and let the hills ring out with joy before the Lord who comes to judge the earth. The Lord will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with equity. A reading from 1 John. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God and everyone who loves the parent loves the child. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we obey his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome, for whatever is born of God conquers the world. And this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. Who is it that conquers the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not with the water only, but with the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one that testifies, for the Spirit is the truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, Alleluia.
You know, we like to have labels for certain Sundays. You know, we have Good Shepherd Sunday, of course, Pentecost Sunday, Easter Sunday, Christmas, uh, first Sunday after Christmas. We have Reformation Sunday. We like to sort of label Sundays based on the lessons of the day or the theme of the day. Today would be Relationship Sunday. Relationship Sunday. Because almost every one of the key relationships in our life are, are talked about within these three lessons. Here we have the parent-child relationship. We have uh, the friend relationship. Uh, we have even the relationship between us and the world, or us and strangers. And frankly, there is also a part of this that is our relationship to ourselves. Our relationship to ourselves. And we don't often think about that. We don't really ever think about what it means to sort of care for ourselves or be in relationship with ourselves. Sometimes it, it comes in the form of a challenge. Most often it comes in the form of feeling sort of inadequate and we need to be reminded and sometimes even reminded by ourselves that we are valued, that we are a child of God, that we have this sort of relationship with God that allows us to, to look in the mirror and love the person that looks back at us, right? And so here we have relationships going on, but then it gets sort of mixed in with this term commandments. And often these, this, these lessons are sort of made conditional. You know, if you keep my commandments, I will love you. Or if you keep my commandments, you will be my disciple. What do we know about commandments? What do we know from Jesus himself about commandments? The lessons that we have today have often been interpreted to create and exclude others, create outsiders, by sort of having this little bit of pride, you know, I keep the commandments, right? But what did Jesus do with people who took pride in keeping commandments? He used them as examples of someone who might not be as in touch with what God was doing through Jesus' life and ministry. Jesus pointed out to others that, that to have pride in keeping commandments is to reject in some way your relationship with God because making it reciprocal, having you sort of earn your way to where God is, is somehow counterintuitive to what Jesus' whole life was about, much less his death and resurrection. And so as we think about this Relationship Sunday that we are engaged in today, think about the different relationships in your life. Think about, for instance, a childhood friend who years and years later and over long distance of miles, you still have an incredible relationship with. The kind of relationship where you might not hear for several months from that person, you might not call them, they might not call you, but the moment you see their name on the phone or the moment they see or hear your voice on the line, the miles and the distance and the years just melt away. It is a relationship that is so comfortable, so comforting, that we sort of let out the air. We relax. We know that that person knows our story. We know that that person knows all the clay feet and the mistakes and the, and the flubs that we've done in our life, but they also know the joys and the triumphs. And because that relationship has endured, we know that the balance has been kept. Relationships that last, whether it's friendships or marital relationships or work relationships, 
those relationships are built on an honesty about who you are, but also based upon a sense of being forgiven and being understood. It's the relationship that we have with Jesus that we have somewhat trivialized by using the word friendship. But really, it's a wonderful expression. And Jesus actually says, I used to call you servants, but now I call you friend. That means that not only do we value our relationship with Jesus, but Jesus values God's relationship with us. There's also a reciprocity there. Not that we can do anything to achieve the grace of God that has already been given us in baptism. But there are certain things we can do for God. One of the key things that we can do for God is to be open, forgiving, receptive. We can look at those who are different from us. We can look at those who we might uh, otherwise judge. And we don't have to do what they do or believe what they believe. But we can form a friendship. One of the great friendships of the 20th century was between Desmond Tutu and the Dalai Lama. Two great world leaders. One of Christianity and one of Buddhism who found common ground in their efforts to bring peace and conversation and, and to take down the temperature of conflict. They found common ground in God. They found common ground in seeing the humanity in each other. And so as we look at this Sunday and, and sort of rename it or reframe it as our Relationship Sunday, I would hope that you see yourself as a true friend of Jesus and that Jesus inspires you to keep the two great commandments. Love God and love one another. And as Jesus says, all other commandments fall away in the face of those two great commandments. And so we celebrate our relationship with Jesus. We celebrate our friendship with Jesus and his friendship with us. A friendship that we share in the breaking of bread, in the sharing in the body and blood. A relationship that we share as we look around at our brothers and sisters in this beautiful place. A relationship that sustains us day in and day out and brings us great joy. Amen.
rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. Your Holy Spirit falls upon all who hear the word. Fill your church with the gifts of your spirit and give understanding hearts to those who strengthen our commitments with our ecumenical and interreligious partners. God of grace, hear our prayer. You speak and the face of the earth is renewed. Revive your creation that habitats and every kind of living thing might flourish. Protect endangered species and help us to care for all your creatures. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your world is divided and nations rage. Grant wisdom and vision to world leaders that they may seek justice, peace, and the good of all. Strengthen international partnerships and cooperation. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your children are in need. Comfort all those who suffer, especially those afflicted by anxiety, depression, and mental illness. Help us to be conduits of your love in our care for one another. We pray today especially for Bob, Bob. Joyce, Joyce, Don, Don. Gwen, Gwen, Rose, Rose. Miriam, Miriam, Tommy, Tommy. Kristen, Kristen, Drew, Drew. Joy, Joy, Tim, Tim. Mickey, Mickey, Crosby, Crosby. Terry, Terry, Bob, Bob. Sandra, Sandra, Melinda, Melinda. Marla, and Marlene. We also pray for those who are in service to our country, from our community and our congregation. We pray today for Tyler, Samantha, Zachary, Grant, Colin, Griffin, Brian, and Hunter. God of grace, your work is done in this place with our hands. Bless the ministries of this congregation that we may embody your love for the world. Inspire those who plan and lead worship, council members, committee members, and volunteers. God of grace, your blessed saints now rest in you. Give us thankful hearts for those who have gone before us. At the last, bring us all together around your heavenly banquet table. God of grace, into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love, through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
I invite you to stand if you're able. Let us pray. Risen one, you call us to believe and bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our true vine. Amen. the day that in joy and delight we join with all the angels of heaven and all the creatures on earth to sing our praise and thanksgiving to you, all holy and mighty and glorious God, for Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. This is the day that you gave light to the earth. This is the day that you saved the Israelites through the sea and with your pillar of fire led them to freedom. Now every night is as bright as day, and that light is Christ. This is the day that you broke the chains of death. This is the day that marrying heaven to earth, you washed away sin, rescued us from evil, and brought us your peace. The Lamb who was slain has begun to reign, for Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. 
broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. On this day, send us the power of your Holy Spirit. Revive us with the body and blood of our risen Savior. Illumine our lives with your presence and shine your morning star over the whole human race. For that light is Christ. Thanks be to God. All holy and mighty and glorious God, radiant Father, victorious Son, and shining Spirit, we bless your salvation, we sing of your mercy, and we praise your victory through all time and space, for Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. Christ has made known in the breaking of the bread, come and eat at God's table.
May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. Shepherding God, you have prepared a table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. The God of resurrection power, the Christ of unending joy, and the spirit of Easter hope bless you now and always. Amen. Hallelujah, go in peace, rejoice and be glad.